Hello there YouTube and makers and thank you for joining me today on another New Tool Friday. Today's new tool is a bit of a old hat and technically not a new tool because in, pre in the previous installment of making the tender wheels for the Kozo Hiroka 040 layout Pennsylvania A3 switcher in 3 quarter inch scale to run on a 3.5 inch gauge track for those tender wheels, I had demonstrated how I use the Sureline compound slide part number 1270 for the SAE version and 1280 for the metric version to cut the 10 degree flanges on the tender wheels on the front and the back as well as the 3 degree tread on the tender wheels. Now, I wanted to take a moment to kind of share with you my thoughts and my experiences on the tool. In the previous video when I made these tender wheels, I felt that the video was getting a little bit too long and I wanted to take a moment to stop, catch my breath, and really talk about and discuss the uh, Sureline compound site. As a bit of a side note, for some weird reason, I'm having a really hard time calling it the compound slide. I keep calling it the cross feed slide, the compound slide attachment, the, cro the compound cross feed slide attachment. In this video, I'm specifically referring to one thing that is the Sherline compound slide part number 1270. So if I make, if I misspeak, just know that it's the Sherline compound slide. Now, with that little disclaimer out of the way, I've also done a few more tender wheels at this point. I've done all eight tender wheels, so these guys, as well as an additional eight wheels that I'm basically copying and using because I wanted to get a jump on making maybe a piece of rolling stock or a wagon to be pulled behind the train because I'm thinking that I'm basically going to use the the bogies and the trucks from the uh, tender and adapt that to my own kind of home brew frame so that I have some piece of rolling stock to be able to use with this build. To be clear, the Sherline is a different kind of lathe. It is a bench top desktop small lathe very different from a full-size lathe like pictured here on this full-size lathe on the saddle and cross feed there would be the compound attachment and tool holder built into it on the shirt sure line with the smaller table it requires a compound slide attachment and it's kind of something that I didn't find any information on and something that I didn't really know that I needed but was actually quite important at the time I made my purchase. So that I wish that additional information would have been talked about or available to me to help me make a well, more well-rounded decision. That being said, with what I've experienced so far using the lathe as well as the compound slide, I would probably make the same decision and I would, not probably, I would definitely make the same decision and I would choose without a doubt this lathe and this setup beyond using, going for a used lathe or an inexpensive, questionable quality foreign import. So that you never miss another installment uh, from my channel, whether it be working on the Kozo Hiroka Pennsylvania A3 Switcher Steam Locomotive or any other new, new Tool Friday installments, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as a bell notification. That way you never miss another installment. So let's talk now a little bit more and go, go in depth on some of my experiences on using the compound slide. A couple things that were off-putting or a little bit awkward. 
it is a function of this lathe that the compound side attachment has to be cutting on the reverse side. That's a little bit awkward because I found that when setting up the compound side and machining with it, I would have to hang over the chuck and hang over the rotating workpiece in order to get a good view and see what the compound side was doing and how it was cutting on the far side. With that being said, it makes everything... So let's say in the book, thing, your cutters are, whether it's Kozo Hiroka or like the, the Martin Evans, the, the British model engineer writer, they show you how to set up your compound slide and they show you to set, how to set up your cutters. Well, with this compound slide attachment on the reverse side, things are not only backwards from way, the way they're pictured, but they're also turned upside down. And that takes a little bit of getting used to and thinking through. Some other points to consider on the cross side attachment is that degree markings are every two degrees. And to get to an odd number of degrees, it's in between the two even number lines. And it is doable and you can eyeball it to there, but my concern is I would feel that it isn't necessarily that consistent. Like if I was doing one tender wheel at a time, so all eight, and having to reset up things eight different times, I do think that this, that does leave the possibilities some variation from setup to setup, from wheel to wheel. Hence the reason why I developed the router that I ended up using in which I did all the similar operations at once to all eight tender wheels. Something that I would like to see Sherline do to improve this tool would be to have lines on either side of your primary line that correlate when they're lined up to an even number that it is on an odd number. Because as the book calls out for, it's a three degree taper on the tread. Likewise, another kind of sticking point and that's more of a me issue and my setup issue with the way my lighting is when the compound side is really up against the the piece i'm cutting and really close to the chuck i have very poor lighting and it's something i'm struggling with right now and i'm working on improving improving my lighting situation it makes kind of seeing that line difficult to verify or double check that it's in there especially when you saw that i'm just kind of Futzing around, moving stuff around, moving the different wheels around, and moving the cross slide attachment around to kind of get it to where it, everything lines up to zero and figuring it out to make sure I'm not going to crash any of my cutters into my chuck or anything. So, having another set of lines on the back side of the compound side attachment would be nice. It's not really practical, and I understand why your line would not necessarily do it because it's not very practical because any kind of line on the gib, which you tighten down, introduces variation. So it would automatically make the tool less reliable and have greater variance and less consistency if the marking was on the gib. And on the uh, part of the crop compound slide that it the, the, the gib sits on top of, it's a very small area. So even if there wasn't a line there that correlated to the measurements, it would be very tiny and impractically small, I think. Another aspect in using the compound side attachment is the hand wheel is non-zeroable with the dial. Now, this may actually be, I think is more of a practical aspect because having a uh, hand wheels that you can zero might make them a little bit bigger, more complex, and with the way the compound slide is and as you can see the way i ended up setting it up for cutting the flange is that the compound slide sits above and over my cross slide table so having a larger hand wheel would be impractical in that you would not have as much adjustability and as much movement and as as much freedom to kind of 
set do your setup however or however I need to do my setup the way it needs to work with the tooling that I have. Likewise, I was running out of room, so I ended up removing the handle from the cross slide attachment so that I can make sure that uh, I had enough clearance. With that being said, that does lead into a negative that I felt exists with the cross slide attachment. And that is that it can only take quarter inch cutters. So like these smaller ones. I would have liked if it has the ability to take 3 8 inch cutters. Because as you saw with my setup is that having to insert these little dink, diminutive dinky quarter inch cutter is that in order to cut that flange on the face of the tenderware it had to really stick out far and being able to use a cutter that's 3 8 means that the cutter would be a little bit more rigid and that it would give me a little bit more options and the different styles and sizes of cutters used and the 3 8 might have been a little bit more stiff I felt would have been an advantage and give the compound slide attachment a little bit more versatility and that is definitely something I would like to see Sherline do and would like to see Sherline make not necessarily get rid of this one but maybe as a separate unit that it could take 3 8 but that being said one that instead of cutting on the back side of the cross slide that it cuts in the normal position on the front all in all despite all that information I can't emphasize enough that I am very happy with choosing my Sherline lathe as well as using the compound side. It works very well and in my experience of doing those 16 wheels total, 8 tender wheels, 8 for a piece of rolling stock or wagon, um, I felt it was a very good tool. I felt it was a quality tool, as I've said before, but most importantly, it was very repeatable. When my cross feed and my table was set to and my table dials were set to zero and everything was set to zero, I could bring that compound side in and it lined up perfectly, exactly where it was supposed to for all 16 wheels, front and back, as well, and lined up with. All of, all of my layout lines that I had on my wheels. So it just did it exactly every single time. All the cuts were consistent. And I didn't have any issues. From the machine or from the tool. Issues that I did have were always traceable to my behavior and my mistakes. So while it would be nice to have a compound and tool holder built in to the lathe and cross slide and saddle. I understand why it's not on this machine because it is in this class size of machine. Similar machines like the TAG, which I can't speak too much about because I just don't know much about them and I don't know anyone who has one personally and I don't have any experience on it and I just don't know have very, don't know about what information is available out there on it. In that same class, made in the United States, and a desktop, small, micro, home, benchtop, worktop, whatever, sized lathe, it appears to be similar in that it doesn't have a built-in compound assembly and would require an external accessory or something else for cutting tapers. And as you can see from the photo of an older lathe is that having the Sherline and having a very good machine now is something that I wanted. And I wanted a good lathe and a very reliable lathe so that I can learn on it. And so that I didn't have to spend the next two, three or more years rebuilding and restoring a lathe or older machine that may need restoration or worse yet, acquiring a cheap 
import version and buying it with a 20% off coupon at the local import tool store that is just not reliable, not repeatable, and not consistent. And with the Sherline, it's great for learning because there is no doubt. Every issue and every problem that I've encountered and every scrap part and difficulty has been wholly on my part and my fault. The Sherline has been repeatable, it has been accurate, it has been consistent in everything that I've done with it. And from so far, for those tender wheels and the uh, rolling stock wheels, all 16 of them, very consistent every single time. And any variance or issue was either a totally attributable to me or me not doing something correctly. So in the end, me. Not And a big one would be not being consistent on letting my part cool down after taking big cuts and going to cut it and not dealing with that kind of ex the expansion of a warmer part. And I should have known better. I should have given it the full 10 minutes or more and it would have been fine. So on all 16, what impressed me a lot about the compound slide and the Sherline lathe is that it was the same every single operation every single time so in brief to sum it up with my experience with this year line and what i've done so far um, i would not hesitate to purchase it again and despite using a compound side attachment instead of having one built in knowing how good this machine is and how well it has performed for me it is not really an issue for me because I can make the other cuts and I can make all the other cuts. And when I use the compound slide, it works, it works well. And it's been consistent again for all, all 16 wheels. So that you never miss another installment, uh, whether it be a, a new tool Friday or another installment on the make for parts on the Koza Hiroka Pennsylvania A3 switcher 04 O layout steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale to run on a three and a half inch gauge track. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification. Be sure to also hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and feel free by all means to share as well as comment below. I enjoy an opportunity to hear back from you. I'd like to kind of learn and hear about what some of you out there are experiencing and using. I'd like to learn and understand a little bit more about other desktop machines and lays and see where you've been and how you feel about it. So please, if you've got one, comment below. I'd really enjoy hearing from you. So thank you very much for taking the time to join me today. Hope you found it enjoyable and I hope that if you're someone who's thinking about the Sherline lathe and other micro or desktop smaller lathes that this has been a little bit informative for you and potentially useful and helpful. So till next time, have fun out there, stay safe, and keep making chips.